We're back. Okay. Third time's the charm. This time I'm using OBS, so hopefully it won't crash. Um, one whole person watching. Let's go. All right, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna continue this. We're back for real. We're back for real. Um, let's continue. So, I will post a poll in the chat to see what people think about um, Obara. So this time I'll merge them together. So I'll say um, Obara. You're voting on. You know what? Yeah. Um, Obara kills Darkstar, or you can vote on Darkstar kills Obara, or neither. There we go, there's a poll out. Once again, feel free to vote in that poll. Um, and then we'll descend further down the iceberg. Um, we've actually gone below the, the water. Um, to our right, we have a artwork here of Elia Sand. Um, this says Elia Liana Parallels. So this isn't like a this isn't a huge theory necessarily. Uh, it's more um, it's it's more the idea that I guess it is a theory, right? Um, it's the idea that Elia, the character, is deliberately drawing parallels with Liana Stark, and these parallels will be picked up on by John Connington and will maybe give us more insight into Rhaegar Targaryen. So, Elia is known as Lady Lance. She's uh, She loves to ride horses. She's great at jousting. Uh, she's very fiery and independent and Ariane is having a, whole, a hard time controlling her, right? Because, at least in the Winds of Winter sample chapters, she's travelling with Ariane to meet John Connington and Aegon Targaryen. So, when John Connington... If we, if we have John Connington, John Connington's point of view there, when he sees Elia Sand, he may see Lyanna Stark made anew, and he might have interesting insights as to what you know. What, what does he think about Lyanna Stark? What did he think about Rhaegar? What did he know about Rhaegar's interest in Lyanna and their relationship? What what more can that reveal? Um. There's another theory deeper down that deal, deals with Elia, but for this one, it could you could also explain this one by saying that it's just George reusing an, an, an archetype. You could say that he's just he's created another horse-loving, tomboyish uh, teenage girl, of which he has quite a few. So maybe it's deliberate, maybe it's not deliberate. We're not sure. Um... I don't think that's quite interesting enough to do a poll for, so I will go down to the next one, uh, which is Nymeria and Tyene poisoning Tommen. Uh, what does the poll say for our previous one? Okay, 40 votes are in. 50, currently in the lead, 54% say Darkstar will kill Obara Sand. In second place... 32% of people are saying neither, it's neither, and 15% are saying that Obara will kill Darkstar. Okay, so most people seem to agree with me that yes, it's more like okay, it's more likely that Obara will meet her end of the hand of Darkstar. Yeah, Darkstar for me clearly has a larger role in the story than Obara Sand. So I went that poll. What is everyone saying in the chat, by the way? People sticking with me? I'm surprised everyone's actually uh, coming along with this. I might just fully delete that third. I called this one live stream too because, like, the second live stream is like a minute long. Um, we're stick. We're not going to crash this one. We're not crashing. I promise. I promise. Oh, Carl says. Ah, okay. Polls block the chat box. Yeah, that's that's something I didn't take into consideration when I put a poll in there. It's blocking the chat box. It's on the screen. And it's crashing the stream because there's too much going on. Okay, next time I think I'll I won't if I'm gonna do polls I'll do it via OBS. Um, otherwise, if I'm gonna do Streamlabs, don't bother with polls. Okay, good to know. Learning on the job. That's good stuff. Um, shall we continue? Nymeria and Tyne will poison Tommen. So there's a bunch of things to talk about here. First off, in our first Aereo chapter, I believe we see 
Duran interacting with various different sand snakes, who, as I mentioned in my video, all have different plots and schemes, and plots and schemes are the same thing. So, Nymeria, so Obara, right, wants to, like, sack Old Town, and she wants Nymeria to lead the attack on King's Landing, and so on. Nymeria is more underhanded. She wants assassinations. She wants Cersei, Tywin, Tommen, um, Joffrey. She wants all the Lannisters to be assassinated. Not Joffrey, he's already dead. Does she know he's dead by that point? Probably, yeah. But she wants the the Lannisters, the big players, to be assassinated, and she wants it to be... with. She wants the help of Tyne Sand, who, of course, is obsessed with poisons, because each sand snake kind of takes on a certain asset um, of Oberyn's personality, and Tyne has that kind of snake-in-the-grass, poisonous uh, vibe. And so maybe this will come back, will come back into play, because... In the same way Obara was sent to take care of Darkstar, Nymeria has been um, sent to take uh, a council position in King's Landing, in the place of Duran Martell, who cannot travel due to gout, and probably doesn't want to travel there anyway, especially with a big invasion happening. And Tyene has been sent to infiltrate the Faith, her mother's a scepter, she probably knows a lot about the Faith, that she can believably infiltrate the Faith, learn about the High Septon, work out what's going on with the High Septon. So you have both of these characters heading to King's Landing, at King's Landing at the same time. You have one of them as a poisonous, a, a poisonous poisoner, and another one who wants to use her sister's poisonous abilities to kill some Lannisters. Add that with the fact that Tommen is a doomed character, and it's possible that they will, that they will kill Tommen that way. So why is Tommen doomed? First off, there's the classic uh, Cersei prophecy, right? The Maggie the Frog prophecy for Cersei, the gold will be their crowns, gold will be their shrouds. Um, crowns referring to both the crown of their head, they're all blonde, but also the crowns they're wearing. Joffrey was a king, Myrcella was kind of crowned queen by Ariane Martell as part of her short-lived plan to provoke war between the Lannisters and the Martells. And of course Tommen became king. Um, so he is doomed to die. Um, and in the show we see him jumping out a window, killing himself. I don't think that's super likely in the books, just because in the show it was a kind of trapped teenage Tommen, right? And in the books it's like a ten-year-old. I'd be surprised if ten-year-old Tommen yeeted out the window because he was upset. That feels kind of weird. So, how is he to die? Well, I think, much like Joffrey, perhaps Tommen will also be poisoned as part of some kind of, I don't know, Nymeria and Tyene, maybe it's a a last-ditch thing they do before they leave the capital. Maybe it's something they're doing without Duran's permission. Maybe maybe they do it once they have decided that the that Dawn should join Young Griff. Maybe they're like, well, if, you know, we want Duran, our Uncle Duran, to secure this alliance. Let's push it. Let's actively kill Tom and cause chaos, leave Dawn with no choice because we're going to be blamed. Or maybe it's just a way to stir up chaos to give young Griff and John Connington, the Golden Company, um, a, a major advantage. Watching King's Landing fall into even more chaos where the unstable Queen Mother loses yet another son. Now, how exactly will they poison Tommen? So, it could be the Strangler, because the Strangler is the poison that killed Joffrey and it, it could mirror it, but I think... George R. Martin, Martin likes his variety. I don't think he's going to have it be the same poison. There's one specific theory, and it's on that famous Dark Theories Reddit thread, and I did some live streams about the Dark Theories. There's one theory that to Tommen's cats will be infected, not infected, sorry, will be poisoned with basilisk blood. Now, obviously, it's a big point is made of the fact that Tommen loves his cats. He's got Lady Whiskers. Excuse me, I keep bumping my desk. He's got Lady Whiskers, he's got Sir Pounce, and he's got the third one whose name I, I always forget. Who's the other one? Sir Pounce obviously is Azor Ahai, um, and I promise I will do a three-hour Sir Pounce live stream. That's still coming. I promised that last year, it's still coming. And Lady Whiskers is, is the Maiden Fair. Who, who's the third cat? I can't remember, but yeah, I'm sure you'll let me know in the chat. I've got my eyes on the chat. But um, the idea is that 
there's a poison known as basilisk's, basilisk's blood, which the faceless men like to use. And in fact, Jack and Hagar uses it in Harrenhal. So, in A Clash of Kings, Arya tells Jack and Hagar one of the names on the list is Weiss. Weiss being this, um, you know, this thuggish servant who beats her and is really horrible to her. And then her, his throat is suddenly torn out by his dog who went rabid. And then in a later book, we, alert, we learn that the faceless men have basilisk blood, which drives animal animals and humans insane. It kind of makes them feral and feverish and uh, violent. And then, as a reader, you can connect the dots, right? I remember I caught on that on the first read, and I remember being like, oh, that's cool. Um, so the idea is that they someone will... that Tyne and Nymeria will poison his cats with basilisk blood, and they will just go wild and feral, and he'll run into the room like, let me play with my cats, and they will just lunge at him and basically tear him to bloody shreds with their... Uh, teeth and claws, which is horrific. The third cat is called Boots, apparently. Thank you so much. Boots the cat. Um, but yeah, torn to shreds. Oh, Boots. Puss in Boots, I guess. However, maybe he won't be killed that way. Maybe it'll be another form of poison. But see, the cat thing... The cat thing is sneakier because Tommen currently has a taste tester, so it will be hard to poison Tommen. So it's possible that they realise, okay, so Sir Boros Blount of the Kingsguard is Tommen's taste tester, so we can't poison him, we're going to poison the cats instead, because no one's no one's testing the cat food, no one's ca- testing the milk, right? Apart from Robin Aaron, he's sometimes crawling in and lick, lapping up that milk, you know what I'm saying? But, or, actually, maybe the... Maybe they try to poison Tommen, but they don't succeed with it. So maybe they try to put po- Tyne and Nymeria try to poison, let's say, his drink, his food or something. But Boris Blount is the one who gets killed. He he tastes Tommen's food and then he fucking dies. And Cersei's paranoia continues to grow and her craziness, her mind begins to un- continues to unravel. Where she's like, oh my god, someone literally tried to poison is it the dirty Dornish who've come to the city? Is it the Tyrells? She's probably going to blame the Tyrells. She'll probably blame Marjorie or someone. And so that way the whole poisoning obsession comes into play, but it doesn't actively kill Tommen. It just creates more chaos in King's Landing and kills off Boris Blount. Because we know that originally Boris Blount was going to die instead of Sir Aris Ho- Oakheart. So... George needed a space on the Kingsguard for Sir Robert Strong to enter, you know, the Undead Mountain. And how do you find that space? Well, initially, Boris Blount was going to die, I think, of a heart attack. And it's very likely that heart attack would have, you know, even though it was natural, probably would have made Cersei crazy anyway, because it's like, oh, the food test has suddenly collapsed and his heart stopped. Someone tried to poison Tommen. But then at some point, he George changed it, so Sir, Sir Boris Blount survived. Um, is still alive, right? He's still described as looking pallid and unhealthy and wheezing and blah, blah, blah. He was never that fit to begin with, but the food tasting is, like, making it worse. Uh, so instead, he killed Aris Oakheart, um, who presumably was going to have a bigger role, but then he was like, nah, I'll just kill him off. Um, and the question is, why? Is it purely that you just that he decided, I don't need Aris anymore, so I'm going to kill him off to simplify the POVs? Or was he like... I will sacrifice Aris because I really want Boros Blount to survive. At least long enough for Nymeria and Tyene to come in and try to poison Tommen, and then I can have a scene where Boros Blount eats the food and fucking dies, which would be pretty cool, because Boros Blount is a piece of shit. So so there's a couple theories in one. I guess this is they poison Tommen or they try to poison Tommen. Either way, um, I will throw that out in the form of a poll. If it's true that the polls are specifically making my live streams crash, then maybe this will be the last theory-related um, live stream to have a poll, because I do want to use Streamlabs, because I'm paying for it, so there's no point in not using it. And I want to see if you guys have any questions, right, when you send in tips. I don't want to miss that stuff out. Um, but poll... Will... A little bit of typing ASMR for you. Will Nymeria and Tyene poison Tommen? Check the live chat if you want to vote on that. I haven't checked the chat in a while. Let's see what people are saying. Apart from posting skull emojis because I've crashed twice already. 
<laughs> yeah, the sand snakes are taking down the live stream. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. Duran's trying to Duran's trying to crash the stream. Theory: Jane Pool is pregnant with Ramsay's son, who will inherit the Dreadfort not as a Bolton but as a Pool, and she'll name him Theon. Ooh, that's kind of badass. Three live streams in one day, blessed. Exactly. Exactly. Tell me I'm not the best at Song of Ice and Fire YouTuber when I'm giving you not one, not two, but three live streams in a day. Um, so, oh, looks like the yes side is winning. Looks like people think... I mean, oh, it's close, though. It is quite close. Okay, the chat... Based on what you guys are saying, it seems like you... You like the votes, you like you like the polls. Okay. Well, if I think a live stream would be served by polls, then I'll stream via OBS. If I think it, it won't be served by polls, I'll stream via Streamlabs. And if, there, if you send in anything via Streamlabs on a non-Streamlabs stream, which I'll try and clarify at the start of each stream, then the next stream I will answer those. Um... Cool, okay. Let's continue. Going down, we have... A couple of... Speaking of Nymeria, we have some more Nymeria theories. And here's um, an art piece by Bella Bogoltz of Nymeria, which is pretty cool. So, first up, we have Nymeria will be executed. So the idea here is that... Duran will join young Griff. So Ariane has a... Um, has a certain code word uh, that she'll send back to Duran. She's she's going to meet John Connington and Young Griff, as I said. And the idea is that if she is convinced that yes, we should join them, we should because the forces are raised in Princess Princess Pass. I believe they're getting ready for battle. If they genuinely believe we should do this, we should side um, with these invading this invading lad who claims to be Aegon and the Golden Company and so on. Then. If Ariane believes that to be the best for her house and for Dawn, she sends a letter back to Duran with a secret message, which basically means war has unfolded. You know, it, war, we are going to war. Um, now, let's say Ariane does this. Maybe it's heat of the moment. Maybe it's after she realises that, I know, she's seduced Aegon and realised, oh my god, I'm going to be the queen. I'm going to be the queen of Westeros. Hell yeah, let's get this going. Or maybe it's because... She wants to do it before it's too late or whatever. But let's say she sends a letter back to Duran. Duran goes, okay, we're off to war. And then in King's Landing, what's going to happen? Everyone's going to be like, okay, well, Dawn's off to war. And we have um, we have Oberyn Martell's bastard daughter here in the city as a hostage. And maybe they'll keep her as a hostage. And then Dawn refuses to do anything. And then they kill her. Or maybe... Instead of keeping her as a hostage, she is executed. Like, let's say Cersei has somehow, somehow wrestled power from the Tyrells and from, you know... Maybe Varys has helped her from behind the scenes, basically fuck things up more. And he's like, yeah, Cersei needs to have a bit more power if, if chaos will continue to reign in these streets. And so maybe Cersei angrily executes her. Um, but the thing is, isn't Tristane also being sent to King's Landing? Right, that's true, right? Tristane is being sent to King's Landing. So if that's the case, it would be very strange if Durand was openly like, yep, we are officially siding with the invading forces, even though my son is in King's Landing and is an obvious hostage. So I don't see a situation in which Durand declares war when his son is in King's Landing, um, and if he gets his son out of King's Landing, why would he not also get Nymeria out? Unless I'm misremembering, but I'm sure Tristane is heading to King's Landing. Ah, so Crossfire says, I think someone will poison Tommen. We're supposed to believe it was them, but it was me, Varys. Yes. Varys has his pick of people to kill. He's hiding in the walls. He's got little birds on his side. He's sleeping by, like, a little underground campfire, having marshmallows and sausages. Um, I feel like Varys is a vegan sausage person. For some reason. You know what I mean? Anyway. He has his pick of who to assassinate. So he's looking through the, the slit holes and the win secret windows. And he's like, oh, I'm going to kill Kevin. Because he's a figure of stability. 
Um, okay, I'm going to kill Pycelle at the same time because that means Maester Gorman could replace him and Gorman Tyrell, more Tyrell influence, that will offset the Lannister power balance and then more chaos, more conflict, more tension. Excellent. Who shall I assassinate next? Ah, the king himself, Tommen. If I assassinate Tommen, that'll drive Cersei over the edge. Maybe she will... Maybe she will kill Nymeria. Maybe... Well, if, if Marcella is in Dawn, that means that Marcella is technically the queen, but then Dawn has the queen, and if Dawn sides with young Griff, then it, the war's basically over at that point. Lots of stuff could happen. But that actually leads us onto this next theory, interestingly enough, which is that Nymeria will be assassinated. So the idea here is that Varys will assassinate Nymeria, and it will come across as though she was clearly killed by Cersei or killed by the Lannisters or whoever. And Duran will hear, hold on, I sent in good faith, not not really in good faith, but quote-unquote in good faith, I sent my bastard niece to King's Landing. Um, and what's happened? You killed her. Well, screw you. Now I'm full, I'm going to team uh, Targ slash team Blackfire full throttle. Um, loads of stuff could happen. I'm not sure. And what I, again, I mentioned this in my previous live stream. I'm not, I wonder how much of this is planned out and how much of this is George just being like, I'm going to throw as many chess pieces into the boiling cauldron of chaos that is King's Landing and just see what happens. I'm going to stir it up. We've got Varys in the walls. We've got Cersei going crazy. We've got the Tyrells gaining influence. We've got figures of stability dropping left, right and centre. We've got the Faith of the Seven taking over. The Faith Militant taking over. We've got Tyene infiltrating the Faith Militant. We have Nymeria deliberately causing chaos in the council. Like, he might not have a... Uh, he might have an end point, but to get to that end point, he's like, let's just make things as chaotic as possible to justify this sudden young Griff invasion and how it could actually succeed. Um, yeah, so what did the poll say? So 54 votes, thank you very much. 57% believe that yes... Nymeria and Tyene will poison Tommen. 43% of course say no. Um, interesting. And so that was, will they poison Tommen slash will they attempt to poison Tommen? There's lots of foreshadowing there. If I had to guess, I will say it's more likely that they try to and then they kill Boros Blount um, than actually succeed, but I do think there will be an attempt. So I'm ending that poll and let's start a brand new one. So, oh, that's a Q&A, not a Q&A. Start a poll, there we are. Let's have a look. So yeah. What? A little bit more typing ASMR for you. What happens to Nymeria? Executed? Executed by the Crown, assassinated by Varys to stir up chaos, or neither? So that could be she lives or flees or whatever. So the poll is out. Feel free to take part in that. We'll look at the results a little bit later. Um, let's see what people have to say. Yeah, I would be... I would be very surprised if Tristane does actually end up going... To King's Landing to be warded, like I feel like that would be the dumbest thing Duran could do. So I think he's just kind of yes, we will at some point, blah blah blah. But I don't think he's actually can do it. <clears throat> George wanted a Boris Blount chapter with only food descriptions. Hell yeah. Okay, let's move on to. The next theory. And as a reminder, if you have any questions, you have anything specifically to say, feel free to support the channel via a super chat or a Streamlab tip. And I'll read that off for you. People are cooking in the chat. People are saying that Ariane is not Duran's daughter. That's a different theory altogether. That's, that's the Martell iceberg theory. At some point, I'll have to do the history of House Martell. I'm not sure when. Okay, moving further, we've now reached the bottom of the iceberg. Not into the dark depths below, but the very bottom of that iceberg. 
Obara will join Darkstar. So this is sort of the third option that's in my in my head. Previously we talked about, and by previously I mean literally a previous stream before it crashed. We talked about Obara killing Darkstar, and then we talked about Darkstar killing Obara. But what if Obara joins him? And so it'll be an Aereo POV where uh, him and Balon Swan are both are both slain by Darkstar and by Obara betraying him. You can kind of see it. You can imagine it, right? You can see Balon Swan of the Kingsguard, and and by all accounts, Balon Swan is a rather honourable guy, up against the dastardly, child mutilating Darkstar, who is that Black Mirror to Sir Arthur Dane. Kingsguard versus Dark Kingsguard fighting, and while they're fighting, Ariel's like, "Haha, three v one, but." He's stabbed in the back with a spear. The bloody spear tip comes out the front. He looks down. He cannot believe it. It's Obara. She's betrayed him. You can imagine that going down in the show. Um, people don't talk about this enough. Uh, but, like, there are so many scenes in the Game of Thrones show where, like, one character has the upper hand over another and the music ramps up and the character with the advantage is about to kill the character with the disadvantage and then suddenly they get stabbed in the back and they go... Ugh! and then they die and that happens like six times in the entire show to the point where it's like comical uh, I've never seen anyone talk about that every time it happened I would watch it and be like they they've done this again it, it, one was like a Dothraki ki killing Jorah one was Coltana Coltana one was cool with the, the sword going straight through the mouth um, evoking Biter's death in the Feast for Crows anyway I got super distracted sorry um, where am I going next Obara joining Darkstar, yes, yeah, sorry, so Obara betraying Aereo Hotar, killing him, because I think it's more interesting if Aereo, if he is to die, that he dies at the hands of Obara as part of a twist, and then Balon Swan is killed by Darkstar, Obara and Darkstar team up, they join forces, it's the Predator meme, the boom, they, get, they do that handshake, bulging muscles, because Darkstar, Darkstar took part in Ariane's botched plot to stir, to basically cause war between Dawn and the Lannisters by crowning Marcella, and then when that plan was foiled, he swiped at Marcella and tried to kill her as a as a Hail Mary, as a kind of fuck you, I'm gonna kill you, and I'm gonna force there to be a war. So if he's on the run, if he's a rogue, because of course Duran is like, no no, I have plans, I have long laid plans, I'm being patient, you're being a hothead. Darkstar's like, I'm not having any of that. Maybe Obara isn't having it either, because we know Obara wants war too. She wanted King's Landing to be sieged. She wanted, personally, to sack Old Town, which she fucking hates. Which is interesting, because she's from Old Town. She's the daughter of a, an Old Town whore, so clearly there's some trauma associated with her upbringing there, before Oberyn took her away. But if, Ober if Obara once war and Darkstar once war, maybe they team up, and they do... something. They do, they do something. Uh, dastardly. That's independent of Duran and the Dornish plot. There is a theory later, uh, further down, that it dives into just exactly what it could be that Obara and Darkstar get up to, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. But whatever Gerald Dane's plan is, do you think that Obara will join him and betray Aereo Hotar and Balon Swan? Let's end the previous poll. So, what happens to Nymeria? 50% of people voted neither, so neither executed nor assassinated that she will survive, fair enough. 29% said executed, 21% said assassinated by Varus. Let's end that poll and throw in a new one, this one being, uh, yeah, will Obara join Darkstar? Will she betray her comrades and join Darkstar? Vote in the chat if you so desire. There we go. Not Aereo, he's part of it, says April. Part of it. So, if he if he were part of it, then he'd only be acting on behalf of Duran, which means that there's a plot the reader doesn't know about, you're implying, where Duran is ordering Obara, Balon, and Aereo to deliberately hunt down Darkstar, except they want to keep him alive, and they're using it as a pretense to kill Balon Swan. Maybe as revenge, right, for bringing of the head of Gregor Clegane, and obviously the head's bullshit. I don't know. So. 
let's move on to the next part. So this one, right at the bottom of the iceberg, Tyene will fucking blow up. So the idea here is that the Sept explosion in the finale of season six will come to pass uh, in the books in whatever capacity. And that if Tyene is infiltrating the faith, that naturally her end will be blowing up. As I said, all the Sand Snakes are sort of, they, they're all kind of doomed. They're kind of destined for grisly ends. And what's better than Tyene literally blowing up in the Sept? So whether this theory is correct or not kind of relies on whether Cersei does actually blow up the Sept, whether that was a an idea exclusive to Benioff and Weiss, whether that was an idea George had or like a half-baked idea. We don't know. I certainly don't know. Um, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Because on one hand, yeah, you can see it happening if done right. So if Cersei faces the consequences of her actions and blowing up the Sept is basically the last fuck you before um, Aegon and John Connington and the Golden Company reach King's Landing and basically solidify their rule as the good guys, with young Griff coming in as the handsome young hero, saving the day from the Mad Queen. Um, unlike the show where Cersei is rewarded for blowing up the Pope and the Kardashians and Vatican City uh, by becoming queen despite not having any cl any blood claim to the Iron Throne. So, maybe. However, it is a very simplistic way to sort out loose ends. Could be satisfying, could have great consequences, and I can see it happening easily. But you could argue that maybe having all the enemies of Cersei in one place and boom, they all blow up is a bit too convenient. It's, it's too much sort of like, you know, slicing through the Gordian knot instead of unravelling it. But if that leads to Cersei's immediate downfall and the, the guaranteed success of the Golden Company because it's such a shocking act, I can see that happening. And George kind of, you know, it hasn't been the first time he's slice through the Gordian knot. You could argue that's what the Red Wedding is. As effective as it is, it's essentially being like, let's wrap up an entire plot thread and all of the subplots within it with a giant massacre. It'll be a similar thing. It'll be it'll be a green wedding of sorts. But just not a wedding. It will be green though. Um so will Tyene if there is an explosion, will Tyene be part of it? I can see that happening. I can see her being one of many casualties. But surely she's going to poison someone before she gets involved in that, right? It's been foreshadowed too much. How How's the poll doing? Will Obara join Darkstar? 64% are saying yes. 36% are saying no. That's pretty conclusive. Looks like people really think that Obara is changing sides. Okay, let's end that poll. And let's strike up a new one. This new one being... Ahem. Don't mind me. Will Tyene fucking blow up? There we go. Start poll. Feel free to vote. Yeah, Carl says Cersei's definitely doing something with wildfire, wildfire and taking out lots of folks at once. Mm, yeah. It's cool. It helps Gurm thin the narrative herd. You're correct. It does give Young Griff a possible opening. And it, it plays into Gurm's idea of taking real world history and timesing it by a hundred, going maximalist with it. So, you know, taking the gunpowder plot and saying, hey, what if it was successful, but it was the Vatican times a hundred, <laughs> and it was green. So, you know, that could be the inspiration there. Um, cool, shall we continue down the iceberg? So next up, we have gone past the iceberg we have descended into the dark, dark depths. And this one is Elia Sand will seduce Aegon. And on the right, we have a, um, a picture of Aegon Targaryen slash Aegon Blackfire slash Young Griff with his blue hair. Um, so, as we've talked about before, Elia is feisty. Um, she's also pretty flirty. So there are two knights um, traveling on the ship with Elia and Ariane Martell and so on. Um, one of them is called Sir Joss Hood, and one of them is called Sir Garibald Shells. And if you're wondering how the hell I know that, it's because I specifically mentioned them in my Sand Snake video, and I still remember them in my head. I haven't drawn that knowledge from the books, so I'd have absolutely no idea. Um, 
And she flirts with both of them, and Joss Hood in particular is, kind of goes along with it, and is like, mm, yeah, you need a spanking boy. But I don't know what, he doesn't say boy, um, B-O-I. Uh, but then Ariane's like, stop this, go below deck, stop fucking about. So she's feisty, she doesn't listen to instructions, and we know she's very flirty. And, you know, perhaps there's Liana parallels. If We don't know much about Liana, but maybe she was flirty as well, and that could... Maybe that's related to the Rhaegar situation, we don't know. But the idea behind this theory is that Aegon and Arianne meet, and the reader expects Arianne to seduce Aegon. Or maybe for Aegon to seduce Arianne, who uses her sexuality to get men to do what she wants... She's very, um, uh, oh, what's the word? She's very, um, promiscuous and so on. But what if this pretty boy is the one guy who's actually able to sway her? Who, who she actually falls in love with despite everything? Or it's the other way around, he, she manipulates him as she did with Arasoka. So maybe it's a, she continues that trend or it's a subversion of that. But either way, it seems likely that Ariane and Aegon will get together, marry... Ariane will be the queen, the the beautiful younger queen who takes down Cersei that she didn't expect, perhaps. Um, that would be pretty cool. We have the handsome young man and uh, becoming king and then the sexy queen and they're the good guys and they, they root out the mad queen Cersei and they make everything perfect and Daenerys, by comparison, looks like an evil villain and it's all kind of deliberately fairy tale storybook. But what if that doesn't happen? What if Elias Sand throws a spanner in the works and she seduces Aegon and he's smitten with her because what character in A Song of Ice and Fire isn't smitten with underage girls, underage teenage girls? It's every male character apparently um, because why not? So maybe Elia will seduce Aegon and he'll be like, I want to be with her, I don't want to be with you and then Ariane goes, well, I'm not securing any kind of alliance with you, with you and the Golden Company because I, I want to be queen and you're cavorting with this paramour, you want to marry this, uh, this, I don't know, this Dornish bastard? No, my bastard cousin? I'm not having it. And then Dawn doesn't get involved. Um, I don't see the point in this at all, genuinely, I don't see the point in this, I think. Dawn probably will side with young Griff, I don't know what the point of them not doing so, if they just suddenly pulled back after all that build up, I'm like, no, we're not going to side with you. What does that lead to? Is it them ine inevitably siding with Daenerys? No, I don't think so. I think Dawn will side with Young Griff and the Golden Company. Aegon and Ariane will probably marry. And even if Elia did seduce Aegon, like, Aegon's not... Is he going to, like, impulsively marry a Dornish bastard, even though he knows that it will scupper an alliance? Or is it that he does marry Ariane, but it's Elia he's interested in, and that cause causes tensions between them, which makes for character drama and conflict later on down the road. I don't know. I think it's just an interesting character George threw in. I think he just wanted to use as many of the Sand Snakes as possible, because he likes the Sand Snakes and he likes Oberyn. And so, yeah. But, what do people think? So, the previous poll... Oh, that's, uh, yeah... That's a that's that's a big that's that might be the biggest yes we've had so far. Seventy four percent are saying yes, Tyene will fucking blow up, and twenty six percent say no, she won't. I'm very surprised by that. That's a lot of people being like, yeah, she's doomed to be, <laughs> she's doomed to be destroyed in the sept. Okay, I'll end that poll, and I'll throw out the other one because I am interested. Do you think Elia will seduce Aegon? Will Elia Sand seduce Aegon, yes or no? The poll is going out. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Live reaction of John Connor when he hears that Aegon married a bastard and destroyed their entire plan. <laughs> He's like, God damn it. We don't have time for this, I'm dying. I'm turning into a statue. I love how the chat has just fully accepted that this is, in fact, Aegon. No one is questioning this. Okay, let's continue to go down the dark, cold, watery depths of the sea. So this one, as usual, we love to have um, 
theories based on parentage in this community. So, Septa Lamour is Tyeen San's mother, and here is Septa Lamour, I guess. So, um, so Septa Lamour is a scepter aboard the Shy Maid, which is the boat that young Griff is on in Dance with Dragons, right? Tyrion travels with him there. When he's initially trying to travel to meet with um, Daenerys, right, and and, tr- and marry her. Um, we know he's being trained by various different people, so he has um, Sir Rowley Duckfield, kind of his first, mem- first member of his Kingsguard, is training him with swords. We have the half... Uh, yeah, the half maester, Halden half maester, who's training him in you know history and politics and philosophy and poetry and all that stuff. And we know that there is a scepter who's spending time with young Griff and presumably um, teaching him about the faith so that he knows a lot about the faith. Now, it's possible there are so many different theories around her. So she has stretch marks, which suggests she's given birth. It could also suggest she gained a lot of weight and lost it very quickly, but probably not. She's probably just... Um, given birth and so is she some is she some character's mother is she some character who we think is missing but has returned in some capacity so some people think she's a Shara Dane that Shara Dane fled gave birth to that stillborn and fled and she's on the shy maid um, some people think that she's training young Griffin more than just the faith that she's training him in the art of I guess Quaitus, so he's a good lover, or, or, or to prove that he's fertile, and so she's had his bastard. That one's a lot less likely. That one's kind of weird. I guess it could be right to prove he's fertile. Um, but this theory says that Septa Lamour is Tyene's mother, which is interesting. So we know that um, Oberyn banged a scepter because, of course, he did, and then. Uh, she gave birth to Tyne Sand, and we know that Tyne Sand regularly visits her, her mother. So it'll be weird if this, if her mother is Septa Lamour in Essos with young Griff, right? Because we know that Tyne visits her. Um, I guess she's of the right age, um, but I don't know why would why would Tyne's mother? What's the link there? Why would Tyne's mother be trading young Griff? Why would she be part of that party unless? the Martells were in on it, but they're not, right? As far as we know, Duran is not is not plotting with Young Griffin and the Golden Company. That's a surprise to him. He wants to find out what's going on. So, no, I don't personally think Septa Lamour is Tyne's mother. It's too random. She, pretty sure Tyne's mother is in Westeros. The link implies more. <laughs> that link implies that there's some kind of conspiracy going on that doesn't p- appear to be the case. So, I don't know what's going on. But I, I don't think everyone under the sun has to be someone else's father or mother. Um, but that's just me. I will know what you think. So let me end the previous poll. Will Elias Sand seduce Aegon? Oh, wow. This is this is one of our American election results. We got 52% saying yes and 48% saying no. That's interesting because I think no. I'm, I'm in the no camp. I don't, I don't, I, it feels like um, it would feel like a bit of a pointless plot point for me. But most of you say yes, Elias Sand will seduce Aegon. So we're ending that poll. Um, And we're going to throw in a new one, which is, do you think, don't be put off by the fact that I have a sudden opinion, do you personally think that Septa Lamour is Tyene Sand's mother? Is Septa Lamour Tyene's mother? There we go, the poll is out. Um... I wonder if this will get me demonetized. I hope not. <laughs> Is that Bessie? <laughs> Fetch the breastplate stretcher. You need to behave yourself. Okay. Shall we move on, everyone? Um, let's go down to further into the dark depths. Okay. So, I said before, didn't I, that there could be more to the tale when it comes to Obara running off with Darkstar. So, here we have Vulture Queen Obara. So, the idea behind this is that 
It's more about Darkstar, really, than Obara, but she could f feed into it. The idea is that Darkstar is going to play the role of a new vulture king. And basically, a new outlaw king stirring up trouble, kind of maybe semi-endorsed by the Martells, stirring up trouble in the Marcherlands to sort of add to the violence and chaos and so on. So maybe Dawn... Let's say you have the Gon Company invading through the Stormlands, you have the Dornish armies marching through and attacking um, the south of the Stormlands and the south of the Reach, and maybe you've also got a Vulture King causing chaos, stirring up trouble in the Marcherlands to ra distract Reacher Lords and make it even more likely for Young Griff to take over, right? A lot of the setup is how do we have the the crown collapse far in a small amount of time relatively but realistically because George abandoned the five-year time skip so one way to do that is add to the chaos a new vulture king stirring up shit in the Dornish marches so in the past the vulture king kind of like I said played this outlaw king role what if Darkstar takes up that role himself and if Obara joins him maybe she'll be his vulture queen not necess necessarily saying they're going to hook up or get together or anything. But they will team up to attack the marches. We know that Obara, as mentioned before, she wanted to sack Old Town. She despises Old Town. Maybe she will go and sack Old Town as part of this attack. There was an old Dane. More links, more historical links. There was an old Dane, I think it was a Joffrey Dane, who sacked Old Town. Right, distracted a high tower into marching his troops to a certain place, but then he attacked Old Town. Um, so there's that link there. Not entirely sure if that will happen though, because Old Town's already been, you know, just dis dis presumably destroyed by Euron. So what would there be much point to Darkstar and Obara coming with their own bandit army and like sacking it even more? N feels kind of pointless. Or maybe they, maybe if he's a new Vulture King, he will act like a Vulture. He will. Tear apart the carcass. Maybe Old Town will be a burning ruin. Let's say Euron abandons it, doesn't take it over, like his little Isengard with Evil Tower. Maybe he will leave it behind. And then Obara and Darkstar ravage, pillage, burn down the remains, right? The flaming remains. Another thing that could happen is that Darkstar and Obara um, attack Horn Hill. And maybe Sam Tarly goes to Horn Hill, and then maybe we have a confrontation between the new Vulture King and Sam Tarly. Maybe Sam Tarly kills him. Boom. Sam the Slayer 2. Because in the past we had Sam Tarly the Slayer who killed the first Vulture King, I believe. Or maybe the second. I think it was the first. So a lot of this is based on historical parallels and Obara saying one thing about Old Town that one time. Blah, blah, blah. I'd be surprised if that was Darkstar's role. If his, as far as I'm aware, he was... Well, we don't know this for sure, but supposedly he was brought into the story to make up for Ned Dane not being a certain age. Because with the time skip being abandoned, um, Ned Dane, Lord Dane, is a child. And it looks like George wanted a young man wielding Dawn to have some part in the story. So he went, well, I can't use Ned Dane because I didn't do the time skip, but I can do this Darkstar character. So it would be weird if... His fate is to just be a bandit king stirring up trouble, uh, destined to be killed by Sam Tarly. That feels kind of random. But it could be. It could be. I don't know. My instinct is... No. That won't be the role of Darkstar and uh, Obara. But I want, I want to hear your take. So, the previous poll is Septa Lamore, Tyne's mother. 65% of you say no. And 35% of you say yes. Yeah, I think I agree with that one. Um, and the next poll will be, will, will Obara be the Vulture Queen? Yes or no, feel free to vote in the poll. What do we think? What do we think? What do we think? What do we think? Yes, someone mentioned the Stepstones. Yeah, talking about chaos, talking about madness, um, 
happening all around Westeros, we also have to contend with a pirate king in the Stepstones who may side with a certain faction. I don't know. Um, yeah, straight away the majority are saying no, so I kind of agree. I think it's an interesting theory. I actually found it while researching for this live stream specifically. I haven't read it before, but I don't necessarily buy it personally. But it's a it's a cool idea, but I don't necessarily buy it. Um, and now we're moving on to Sorella is Shay. Um, this is of course on the right. This picture is the actress for Shay. Uh, this is a picture from a poster of one of her famous German movies. I thought it would be nice to have some representation there or some other work she's done in the past. So Sorella is Shay. This is this theory is enlightened beyond comprehension. This is the most based theory in a Song of Ice and Fire lore ever. It, that sentence didn't make sense. It's the most based theory in the community. But it's also law. It's also fact. This is a factual... This the, We call it a theory, but it's the truth. It is that Sorella is in fact Shay. Sorella is not Alaras, who, ha, you know, that, that as we've established, that's just a random dude with Sorella backwards, with a widow's peak, who's interested in history and who fits the physical description of... Uh, that's irrelevant. Sorella is in fact Shay. That's right. Um, the prostitute that Tyrion hooks up with. The white-skinned prostitute that Tyrion hooks up with, described as having dark hair, dark eyes, and creamy skin, is in fact half Dornish and half Summer Islander. Uh, doesn't have a Dornish accent, or a Summer Islander accent, but that's irrelevant. Um, isn't even the right age, I believe, but that's also irrelevant. No, what matters is that... Sorella, what is the justification for this? Hold on. I'm trying to commit to the bit. It's it's that Sorella isn't currently in Dawn because she has run away and she's become a camp prostitute and then she's hired by Tyrion. No, she's deliberately... I should have looked into this further. Big surprise, this is an Order of the Greenhand theory. Uh, so it's completely insane. I think... Is the idea that it's just random? Like, Sorella just is Shay? That, like, the camp prostitute is actually this random sand snake? Or is it a conspiracy? Was Duran like, I have a plan for you. I need you to infiltrate a L Lannister war camp and become a prostitute for someone very important, like Tyrion Lannister, and then feed me information. And try not to get strangled. Oh no, you failed. Um, yeah. There we go. Um, joking aside, this theory is complete nonsense. You know, no shit. <laughs> of of course, of course, Sorella's not a Shay. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't add anything to anything. She doesn't. She's not the right age. She doesn't look like she she should be Sorella. She doesn't act like it. She doesn't sound like it. She's just a rat. Like you could just point to any any character. You could point to I don't know a maid, Cersei's maid in King's Landing. That's that's Sorella. Taina Merriweather is actually Sorella, by the way. Actually, no, Sorella is. Um, who else is Sorella? Who's a young woman in the South, specifically in King's Landing? Well, who says it's a woman? Moonboy. Maybe Sorella is Moonboy. There we go. Um, I, want, I want to see the results of this poll. There is only one right answer. Will Obara be the vulture queen? 17% say no. I agree. End that poll. But let's throw in yet another... Oh! Oh, it didn't let me... Okay, I didn't officially end that poll. So that's why I couldn't start a new one. There we go. I was, confused. I was like, this isn't... surely there's not a poll limit. Um. So, is Sorella Shay? Yes or no? There's only one correct answer, and it's yes, but I don't want you to be biased. Let me know the answer. Is Sorella Sand Shay either running away from home to become a camp follower and in the process changing her skin colour, or being sent by Duran deliberately to infiltrate the Lannister camp? Ooh. Very interesting. Hmm, hmm, hmm. People are getting desperate for wins. <laughs> yeah. 
This isn't even a new theory, this is like an old one. This is like, um, time traveling fetus level, but like it's unironic, which makes it even funnier. No, it's not, it's not the same level. No, it's not the same level. It, it is a silly theory though. The idea is that she was there for Tywin. Okay, so she was there specifically to get information from Tywin slash to assassinate Tywin on behalf of the Martells, perhaps. Very interesting, yeah. Okay, if that's the case, then why did Oberyn bother going and doing that stuff himself? But Shay is actually about the same age as Sorella. Is she? Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. You, you, you raise a good point. Um, they are around the same age. So they have the age going for them. They they are both women and they are both of a similar age. There we go. Perfect. Um 74% say no. 26% um have embraced the meme and said and said yes. Are there more theories? Of course there are more theories. You think we're at the bottom yet? No. We're not at the bottom. I think there's one more theory to go. Okay. Are we ready for the final theory? Dun 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 dun. dun. Tyene will seduce the High Septon. So, we need to address this. We've been talking about Tyene maybe poisoning people in King's Landing. We've been talking about Tyene maybe blowing up as part of the sept, but we haven't talked about what is she actually going to do. She's been sent to infiltrate the faith to find out more about them, but then what? Is she going to stir up more chaos, more tension? Is she just going to report information back to Duran about how the faith is operating? Because I don't see the point in that, like that feels kind of boring. Is she just going to act as a spy? Let's say Dawn does side with young Griff. They have a you know, spy on the inside of, ooh, there's a faith militant situation going on, and um, we have someone from the inside telling us what's going on, and that way maybe they can, maybe young Griff's, you know, strategy and tactics and propaganda can revolve around knowing what's happening inside because they have a spy. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure, honestly, what Tyene is going to do in the faith. I think it's more of an excuse to get her in King's Landing. I don't think she's going to do much with the faith. It's more... There needed, it needed to be justified her going there with Nymeria, and it's like, boom, she can infiltrate the faith. There we go. So, the idea here is that actually, she will have an important role to play. That she will seduce the High Septon. Um, and of course, to the right, there's a very, very, very carefully cropped image of Tyne Sand, the um, best character in Game of Thrones. Now, what would she gain from... Seducing the High Septon. I, I can't. I'm like. I'm having to think on the fly. I genuinely don't know. Like how you even justify this theory. Um. She she sedu no for information, right? She seduces him for information. She sleeps with the Pope, um, and then gets called info and then uses that info to do something or other. There we go. Maybe. The High Septon. Oh, I suppose High, High Sparrow would be would be more apt. His official title is obviously High Septon, but High Sparrow is a bit more personal. Um, I should have put High Sparrow. But maybe the High Sparrow... Maybe in the show, Bronn was filling the role of the High Sparrow. Because Bronn and Tyene aren't really going to interact, probably. But what if, on a napkin, George gave to Benioff and Weiss, maybe he scribbled down amongst, you know, uh, Hold the Door, Danny Burns, King's Landing, King Bran... Uh, Tyene sand bad pussy. There we go. Uh, those are the main notes. And then he like finished off his ribs and left. And they're like, wait, hold on, no, come back. Shit, he's gone. Um, and then they looked at the notes and like, how do we make this work? Um, maybe in the book, Tyne's going to be like, you want the good scepter, but you need the bad pussy. Uh, and then she's going to bite his ear. And because he's so old, the ear's going to come off in her mouth, but she won't care. And then they'll bang. Um... And when he nuts, it'll be pure dust. It'll be like, because <laughs> he's so old. Um, and then he'll be like, wow, that was amazing. I'm going to tell you everything about my plan and my character and everything. She's going to be like, ha ha. And then she'll use that information to sell it to 
to give it to Dawn and, and then Dur Duran will be like, ah, we know about the inner workings of the faith. And then he'll give that information to young Griff, his new ally. Young Griff will be like, aha, now we can do stuff to etc. Da -da. What do you think? I think that's likely. I think this is going to happen. I don't see why it wouldn't happen. Shall we vote on it? Let's vote. Um, so with 40 votes, almost, yeah, 40 votes is Sorella Shea. 70% say no. 30% say yes. Again, I'm not sure if the 30% are funny, uh, being funny here, or whether they're genuinely like, hell yeah, all of the green hand are awesome. Maybe, maybe it's true. So um, I'll end that poll. The, ch the chat is always solidly behind what I'm actually saying by like a solid 30 seconds. So I'm now, <laughs> I'm now having everyone uh, come in and react to the, uh, the high septon's dust. I, I, again, I don't want to put that image in your head, but just imagine an explosion of dust over Tyne's face. Like, <laughs> All right, the new poll. Um, start a poll. Will Tyne Sand seduce the High Sparrow? The poll has been launched. What do we all think? What do we think? What do we think? What do we think? <laughs> that brief, that brief second where it was a hundred percent brought me a lot of joy. Um. Okay, that is the final theory. But I want to hear if there are any more. Uh, does any anyone have any more? Whether it's genuine theories or meme theories, does anyone have any? Anything else regarding the sand snakes to send, post it in the chat and we can talk about it for a bit. Because I'm sure there are a lot more theories out there um, that I have not addressed. I'm sure I've gone through the, the bulk of them, but there have to be some. Okay, oh, that's closer than I thought. 53% <laughs> saying yes, Tyene will seduce the High Sparrow, 47% saying no. Boombla says Tyene will marry Bron. Okay, so maybe when George scribbled Bad Pussy on um on a napkin, Benioff and White, uh, maybe he wrote Bron next to it. And Benioff and White were like, ah, Tyene and Bron are going to get together. And then at the end of season five, they got them together. And then they didn't play with it because they were like, oh, people hate the Sand Snake, so we're going to rewrite everything. But maybe Benioff and White had a longer plot of Tyene and Bron getting together. Based on the books, as Boombla says, Tyene will marry Bron. So... Let's say Bron gets Lollis Stokeworth pregnant. She gives birth. He kills her. Or she dies in childbirth. He has a son. That son is Lord Stokeworth. He's he's the regent of R Lord Stokeworth, so he still owns Stokeworth. Boom. Maybe he owns Rosby as well, because why not? And he's like, I need a new wife. He gets promoted. Maybe he gets given more land and coin and titles and so on by young Griff, who is now the king. And Dawn sided with young Griff. Um, who knows, maybe as a reward, um, Young Griff says, Okay, all of you Sand Snakes, you are all now officially legitimised. Thank you for helping me, you're all Martells. And Bron says, I want to marry Tyene Martell, please. Hells yes. And then Tyene and Bron marry. Very nice. Any more, any more for any more. Tyene... <laughs> Tyene will seduce the pounce, says Peter. Um, I mean, she needs to poison him with basilisk, basilisk blood, in, you know, somehow. She's got to get the basilisk blood in his bloodstream so he can go crazy and he can tear Tommen to shreds as part of the assassination attempt. How else is he going to poison a how, how else is Tyene going to poison a cat? If not seduce him? Oh, I get it. That's what bad pussy means. George on his napkin... With lipstick, he wrote, uh, Tyene Sand, bad pussy. And what he meant was Tyene was going to poison Sir Pounce and turn him into a bad pussycat, so he murders Tommen. But Benioff from Weiss got it the, the, the wrong way around. That could be it. Hmm... Uh. All sand snakes will be dying separately during the winds of winter to reflect failure of all of Duran's scheming. That's from 
Casa we oh okay that's from I don't know how you pronounce that I can't I can't even begin to pron pronounce that I'm sorry but the surname appears to be Stankiewicz very nice so there we go um Santa snakes dying separately I think yeah I agree if they are to die and I've already explained why I think they probably will I think them dying one by one separately makes more sense than them die it feels more interesting to me at least than them dying like in a cluster you know they're each separately trying to find uh, trying to they're seeking revenge in their own separate ways but they all end up dying uh, separately and it shows that duran his schemes do fail he doesn't have a his finger in every pie maybe the sand snakes bring it on themselves because they do things they weren't meant to do like assassinating important people and Duran's like, how could you do this? You ruined everything. Um, he can't, yeah, he can't keep on, he can't control everything and maybe the Sand Snakes are all going to be head smashed in by Robert Strong. There's the whole Gregor Clegane, Elia Martel parallel there, yeah. Um, Tyene telling Duran about Ariane's plan to declare Mycela Queen. Maybe she did, possibly. Sand Snakes becoming part of Danny's Queen's Guard. Maybe, but I think... I guess that could be cool, but... I'm not sure that makes sense, because I think Dawn's probably going to side with young Griff. So... Did Haven just say Tyene Martell? Yeah, that, what I was saying was if... Let's say young Griff legitimises all of the Sand Snakes. I may have said the word pardons. I meant legitimise. Legitimises all the Sand Snakes as a reward, and then Bronn is like... Ooh, Tyne Martell. Well, I'm Lord Stokewell. Or I'm Lord Stokewell's father, so I'm going to marry you or whatever. What's <laughs> it? Dream a song of ice and fire, blunt rotation. Um, Tyrion. Dolorous Ed. And Melisandre. Because she can light the sploof. <laughs> A sploof, of course, being a spliff and a boof at the same time. Uh, sand snakes are all faceless men. Well, yeah, who isn't a faceless man? Oh, Barrett and Darkstar will join Euron, says Casper. Woo! Um, no, I don't know. I don't see that. Like the Sphinx, Sorella is hermaphrodite, and the secret to creating dragons, female changing to male. Possibly. There's some dis that Kirsty says that. Thank you, Kirsty. There's some discussion about whether um, Sorella is a hermaphrodite or um, has some form of gender dysphoria or something, um, or whether it's just a, a Mulan situation of a woman disguised as a man in order to fit into an institution that isn't male only. Um, I don't know, we'll have to find out. We shall have to see. My instinct is that it's more of a Mulan thing. <laughs> All of the Sand Snakes will be killed by Euron Greyjoy on a boat. Oh, you know what? That's a perfect place to end a poll. 42 votes in, literally 50-50. 50 50-50 split, will Tyene Sand seduce the High Sparrow? That is why I have the best viewership. In all the A Song of Ice Fire YouTube community. They can't decide on whether Tyene will seduce the High Sparrow. Um, yeah, Sand Snake's being killed by Euron on a boat. Yeah, that's a good... It's possible that because Obara wields a spear, that maybe Euron will take the spear and split it in half and then stab her with it. And Nymeria... Her mother being a volunteer noblewoman and Volantis being a city that owns slavery and slavers tend to wield whips historically and in pop culture, then perhaps uh, Euron will strangle her with a whip. And then maybe Tyene won't be killed by Euron, but will be captured by Euron, who then will try and marry Cersei, and then Cersei will uh, kiss Tyene to death. Uh, yeah, I can see that happening, definitely. Wait, hold on a sec, that doesn't sound right. Um, 
Are we getting occasional chin, chin scratching ASMR? I'm very sorry if I've been scratching my little chin into the mic. I need to get a better mic setup situation. I apologize. Nightmare blunt rotation. Oh, that's a good point. Um, I could do the opposite. So obviously I had Melisandre to light the blunt, and also because she's hot. And Tyrion is banter, and Dolores said is banter too. Um, nightmare blunt rotation. High Sparrow, because he'd be really serious all the time. And he'd be political. He'd be like, let's just chill with a blunt, and then he'd be... Let's talk about the poor. And it's like, oh, not now. Oh, can we just watch a film, bro? Um, High Sparrow, who else? Um, Alice of Thorn. Alice of Thorn would, like, hold the blunt and finish that shit. Like, it would be like, you want to you wanna pass, bro? Do you want to... No, no, you can... Okay, one more, I guess. Come on, do you want to get... Can I... No, keep going, I guess. Do you want to... You're not much left, Alice. Do you re... No, okay. He just glares at you. And who else? Third person. Um... Hmm. I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to think of the most random character. Shitmouth. The Mountain's Man Shitmouth. He would be funny, but he would clash badly with Alice of Thorn and the High Sparrow, and it would create tension. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know why I'm still streaming. This has been fun to stream. Um, shame about it crashing, but there we go. I will say, um, streaming is bizarre as a YouTuber, because, like, <laughs> like, you can do one stream where you get, like, a hundred dollars worth of super chats that are super helpful, and then you do another stream like this one where I got two dollars, and, like, that's it. And that's fine, because that's the, that's the name of the game. Yeah, this is free content. But it's like, damn, there's no way of knowing why some some days you get you can get paid, other days you get nothing, but it's all worth it for the interaction with you guys. Plus, I've been super inconsistent with live streams, to be fair. Mm. How is every fray explained going? Also, how are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm doing great. Uh, how is every fray explained going? It's still on track to be released around the same time as Winds of Winter. Uh, which is, for those who don't know, the Winds of Winter apparently is releasing on June the 15th and 20th. No. Um, so that's pretty good. In fact, let's take this moment to talk about the future of the channel. So, this, the end of this week, so that's either Friday or Saturday, probably Saturday, I will be releasing The Real Varys, where I'm comparing... Varys from Game of Thrones with Varys from the books. It was originally just going to be a short little video to, um, excuse me, sorry, a short little video to keep you all happy while I work on a bunch of Hot D stuff. Um, but then it turned into a 10, 20 minute video. It's now like one of my longest videos. I don't know how that happened. But anyway, a 20 minute Varys video, that'd be fun. And then once that's released, I'm going to be working hard on a bunch of videos that I will release during... Hot D. Um, I won't reveal them. My patrons know. I've talked about it, but on my patron Discord. But I'm thinking it's going to be five videos. Five videos I'll prepare in advance. Two book versus shows and three animated lore videos. And I'll post them during House of the Dragon. Alongside live streams and reviews and possibly episode breakdowns. There we go. Um, right. Not much else to say except if you enjoyed, like the live stream, uh, comment to help it spread if you want to help it boost in the algorithm. And I guess if you're interested in supporting the channel uh, in other ways, we have a Patreon where there's exclusive videos and Patreon Discord and art commissions and all kind of fun stuff. And I've also got a merch store, so fantasyhavenmerch.com. It comes in a variety of colours. You can get t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, all that, beanies, fun stuff uh, to support the channel. So thank you very much for being a great audience, being an awesome fan base, and I have to continue working on my man Varys because, yeah, it's a long, it's a surprisingly long video, but I'm having fun with it. Um, it his face is just... <laughs>
<laughs> the Varys' actor, Connor Thill, like every scene he just does the, the face where he's like double chin, looking incredulous. Like, Ooh. Um, Speedos, no, no fantasy haven Speedos, but when summer comes along, maybe I should start selling those. Alright, see ya. Bye, everyone.